21 new cases in New Hampshire, bringing the total number of cases to 158. One person has died in the state. a stay-at-home order for New Hampshire residents. It begins early Saturday morning. It will last until May 4th. The governor closing schools. One of the first things that I noticed was the toilet paper. It ran out of the stores all of a sudden. It was there one day, and then the next it just wasn't. And it was literally gone from every store you went to, like the grocery store, Walmart, Target, anywhere that you can think of that would sell toilet paper did not have it. Stores are very limited on certain supplies like Germex, hand sanitizer, toilet paper, paper towels, like paper needs. Amazon, um, the toilet paper, it takes about like a month to get here now. It's all sold out, like, <laughs> um, which is crazy because it's Amazon. You wouldn't really expect something like that from such a big company. But, you know, all the toilet paper is literally gone. I mean, you can't get any. We ordered, it was just a small amount of toilet paper, literally like a package of about 24 rolls. And it's not going to get here until May. I'd say a lot of people's daily lifestyle has to take a drastic change because normally you don't see people walking out midday during the week or you know going to the stores and stores are always busy now for this reason after the toilet paper people started to hoard things like pasta all the canned food was gone all the meats were gone, the trees, the milk, the bread. After that, everything pretty much started to close or it was closing early and you couldn't really do anything anymore. Coronavirus has significantly impacted my way of life for the past couple of weeks. My grandparents, aunt and uncle are all significantly at risk for the virus. The virus could take many lives, including that of my families. Thus, I have been stuck inside of my house, doing absolutely nothing but playing video games and doing schoolwork. Pretty soon, like, we couldn't go to school and we're doing this now. If you go to the mall, it's like, usually you would expect for it to be packed, like any given day of the week, you know parking lots are full, there's people there, but you go now and there's nobody. And that goes for anywhere too. I mean, restaurants, stores, everything is closed. when you're all alone. When you don't live with a spouse, you don't have children, when your family lives in other states, what happens when you really are isolated? You're used to being surrounded by people at work or out in the world, and suddenly the silence is deafening. Um, many people have lost their jobs, including me. I cannot yet collect unemployment as I am still dependent. So my car payments will have to be pushed back along with my insurance. A lot of things started to change at work too. Um, you know, we went from having an open salad bar and like drink stations where people can get their own things to it all being shut down. We can't have people touching things. We have to practice social distancing and everything's done on our end now. I mean, we handle all the food, all the drinks, we hand it to them, we use gloves. Hi, my name is Darcy. I'm a senior at Salem High School and this is what I've been doing during the coronavirus outbreak. I've been quarantined in my house for 27 days now. For the past couple of weeks, many people have been out of jobs and stuck inside, such as me been running and walking trying to stay in shape for soccer season because my spring season got canceled 
I'm a little upset that a lot of the senior activities are getting canceled. Coronavirus may last till June or July, depending on the circumstances and whether people follow social distancing and staying home and staying safe. Being home all the time has been kind of difficult. I do wish things were open because I enjoy going out. I enjoy having things to do. And it really makes me feel like I've taken that for granted now, not having those things to do. I mean, is it a big change like this really a bad thing in people's life? Probably not. At least we're not the class of what, 67 through 71 that got faced with the draft? Like, I could be drafted off to war. Like, our lives are really not that bad, if you think about it. Yeah, we're missing some milestones, but, you know, at least we're not getting shot at. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. On the outbreak, the U.S. has the most confirmed cases worldwide, surpassing China and Italy. Global deaths from the virus now more than 30,000, 10,000 in Italy alone. U.S. stock futures are down after the president extended social distancing guidelines. In the June or July, depending on the circumstances. Is it a big change like this really a bad thing in people's life? Probably not. Being home all the time has been kind of difficult. to schools. Today our administration is announcing that all public and private schools will remain closed through the end of the school year. Remote learning will continue in all districts. This does not apply to residential special education schools. I'm glad to be out of high school. And I'm glad that it will just be over with in a matter of time. And I don't have to actually deal with people at school. I have found myself to be a little more productive, actually, now being able to do everything at home. Because I think I can actually concentrate better. Um, not being in that school setting. Um, it's been fun, actually, for me. I've been catching up on shows. Um, I watched Tiger King, which I really enjoyed. I'm Renee. I'm an emergency services clinician at two local hospitals right in the emergency room. I do psychiatric evaluations. The COVID-19 virus has been very difficult for us as clinicians and other hospital staff. We have to be extra careful entering the rooms of patients, um, wearing our gloves and masks and washing um, our hands a lot. Um, but with the pandemic of the COVID-19, we'll come another pandemic in the mental health field. Uh, we're already noticing a lot of people with extra um, symptoms of depression and suicidal thoughts. There's many people being affected by this virus. They're losing their jobs, um, unable to pay their rent, and uh, a lot are receiving eviction notices already. Um, so with this, there may be um, more people hospitalized, more people with suicidal thoughts, and more people um, trying to end their lives.
Sununu is calling the plan Stay at Home 2.0. Starting May 4th, hospitals can begin time-sensitive procedures, including MRIs, CAT scans, and knee replacement surgeries. On May 11th, businesses like hair salons and private golf courses can reopen. And on May 18th, restaurants can expand their services to outdoor-only seating with tables placed six feet apart. People in New Hampshire, uh, as Dr. Chan uh, alluded to, have taken this epidemic incredibly seriously, and we cannot thank them enough. Everyone has played uh, a significant part in flattening the curve and slowing the spread of COVID-19. I think that this virus is affecting people in a lot of different ways. I see one side of the spectrum of people that is really suffering through this and they're out of work, they're out of money, they can't see friends and family and I know how difficult that is. But then I think there's also the other side of the spectrum of people that are really using this time to their advantage and see this more as an opportunity for growth and to learn and to like really find yourself and go out and experience the world because we have so much time on our hands now. There's not really much else we can do. So I think now is a really good time to do that. You know, just keeping busy. Um, I've been baking too, which has been a lot of fun. I think that they're promoting that we will see the end of it soon. And I just feel like that's a bad thing because I feel like people are just gonna be like, oh, well, we don't have to do this stuff anymore because gonna, it's gonna end soon. So then I feel like I'm just gonna keep picking back up. With things reopening amidst the peak of this virus, um, I think it's really going to give a lot of people a sense of false hope because it really is too early, I think, and I think we are going to see probably a second wave of the virus through this. I honestly think that opening things probably should have been pushed back a little further. Um, I don't think that there's any need to really rush into that sort of thing. I think we really need to just wait it out and make sure that everyone is staying home, staying safe. I don't really think that opening things should be a top priority right now because at the end of the day, that really is just putting more people at risk to the virus. And I think that continuing to limit our interaction with people should be the top goal.